Do you know in the same book that God saw mankind gathering together in the land of Shinar in the east and they spoke the same language and they were building tall skyscrapers and God says what? Nothing will be impossible for them to do what they're doing now, what they imagine to do. So let us go down and confuse them. And God came down and confused them. And that's why you have this bubble, Babylon, and people speak different languages. Why was God concerned so much that he had to confuse them, to scatter them into different languages? No, he's not being antichrist. God is saying they are building tall skyscrapers, tall buildings and nothing what they imagine to do would be impossible for them to do so if they imagine to reach up the tall skyscrapers reach up to heaven overthrow god it would not be impossible for them to do if you study ancient near eastern text that now we have un uncovered right thousands of years old of text whether they're from um, mesopotamia akkadia ugarit yeah babylonia there are this belief in which people had this belief that you can build tall buildings and you can go up to the heavens and you can overthrow God. This is reminiscent of this belief in the Old Testament, in which God is somehow concerned mankind, everything, what they imagine to do will be possible for them to do. He comes down and confuses them. He nips it on the butt, basically, so that he doesn't overthrow, being overthrown. But, but look at this, this is an imperfect description of God. God is all powerful. No one can overthrow God. But, but you see the concern that God had, he said nothing will be impossible for them to do what they imagine to do. Nothing will be impossible for them to do. That shows that shows man, whatever they imagine, they will do it. No, we know what they imagine. We know because we have the text of their belief at that time. Babylonia, we know they were building tall scribe keepers so that they can overthrow God. Nimrod and various others, you know probably why they were throwing arrows to, to, to the heavens and then they're going to kill God. I'm going to kill your God. This is what people had belief. So I've given you two examples. From what I understand these to be that they are imperfect descriptions of God. This does not describe God perfectly. God My final example. God created the heaven and the earth in six days. And the seventh day he rested and got refreshed. Why would why would why would God need refreshing? No, no, it's not about example. Why would God, who is someone who never gets tired, because he is God, he doesn't, he's not weak. No, no, no. no. You see, you're thinking about us. God, does he get tired? No, no. Does God get tired? Does he become weak that he needs refreshment, refreshing? Ref no, when you, when, you, when, you, when you rest and get refreshed, you only get refreshed because now you, you were tired and now you rejuvenated yourself with fresh energy. That's what refreshing is. God is not something that you can apply this language about, this concept, because God doesn't get tired. In the Quran, God says, لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. God doesn't you know, get affected by slumber or by sleep. He created the heavens and the earth in six days and no fatigue touched to him. Refuting the Christian belief that God gets refreshed because you know, he needed to rest. So the idea that I've given you, again a concept of God, which doesn't befit the majesty of God, the characteristics, the attribute, the quality of God. A perfect God doesn't become tired and weak that he needs resting and refreshing. So this concept that you find within the Bible spread out is written by people who did not estimate God in correct estimations because they didn't have the proper understanding or they did and they embellished it with falsehood and falsity. That's why the incorrect understanding of God has been mixed with revelation which was correct in the very beginning. So we need to examine revelation with this mindset and if we find it's okay it's okay if we find that it gives us weak imperfect descriptions of god we have to question it 
that is this revelation from God or not? I think it's quite nice for God to have a Sabbath. It sounds like quite a nice idea that it's, it's just my opinion. I don't know Why would you describe God in, in a form that, is God weak in any way, shape or form? No, no, no. Why would God need rest and, and refreshing? This only is applicable to people who get tired and their energy is lost. They need to rest to brain, get refreshing of their brains, refreshing of their body. It's when, when we work longer hours, we get tired and we need to rest. We need to take in energy to refresh ourselves. You see, when the Bible said God needs refreshing, he got refreshed. That's the question I'm saying you should be asking. Why would you apply the language to God that God needs refreshing? No, no, it's not about you. It's about God. No, no, refreshing is when you are someone who rep needs replenishing of your energy. Not you, not you. Does God get tired? No. The question is, does God get tired? But that's what it says. He rested and refreshed. If it only said he rested, meaning he ceased from the activity. Look, let me give you, let me give you something that. Let me give you something. Let me tell you something that I would have agreed if it said something like, you know, partially, that God, that God, ceased from the activity of creation for six days and then the seventh day he didn't do any creation that would have made some sense but when it said he rested and refreshed that doesn't make sense about god look look how would we understand correct concept of god when we find a book of god says god was beaten up by 20 individuals punched and beaten with a bat and then he bled and he died would you say this con no no it's not in the bible it's not in the bible it's not in the bible the bible doesn't say he got beaten up by 20 people right so if you had something in a book of god which said that would you question that this is god no, no, no. i'm talking about a book of god if it said that god got beaten up by 20 individuals beaten up by bats he bled and he died. Would you consider this is a correct description of God Almighty? I'm not talking about the Bible. The Bible doesn't say he got beaten up by 20 people. No, I'm, I'm talking about another book other than the Bible. If it said God, God became a woman and got beaten up and, and she died. Would you say this is a correct description of God Almighty? No. How would you affirm what is a correct description of God and what is not? You, you're going to say, as you said, we have to reason. When you reason and you read a book which says God came down as a woman and got beaten up by 20 blokes with a bat. Would you say that book is giving us a correct description of God Almighty, all powerful? I'm not talking about the Bible. Remember, we, we have to examine each book, the Bible included. The Bible is not the yardstick, is it? Bible. What evidence does the Bible provide that it's the yardstick? You can't take a de facto proof. Oh. Bible is indeed the yardstick. What evidence do you have the Bible about in the first place? The yardstick, when things are in dispute, you can't just take as a from a perspective of bias, oh, the Quran is the yardstick, the Bible is the yardstick, because now you are examining them. So when you're examining them for the divine origin of these books, you have to use your critical mind and say, let's see what these books say. So if a book describes God in an incorrect way, like I've given you three examples, and another book also gives you an example, God got beaten up when she came down as a woman by 20 bloke. Would you say, using your reason, your critical mind that God gave you, that this is a correct description of God? I would say, no, it's not. Because God is not going to get beaten up like that. He's almighty. I think that God 
Why would God die? Does God die? But can, can, can God die? Can God become other than God? What does he become? Let me just question this premise. Can God become other than God? Can the infinite become finite? Can, can, the, can the infinite become finite? Can he cease to exist? If he wanted to. If God wanted to, in your belief, can he cease to exist and no longer there tomorrow? It's, it's gone forever. No more. So if he wants to, can he cease to exist? Your, your, your friend over there said God can do anything. But you're saying God cannot do anything and everything. So God can do things which are godly, which is within his divine attributes. His, exactly, that's what my point is. So when we look at God who is infinitely all-powerful, all-knowledgeable. God is all-knowledgeable to begin with. Can he become ignorant if he wanted to? Goes against his attribute of all-knowledge, right? If God is all-knowledgeable, it doesn't make sense to say he can become ignorant, does it? If God is all-wise, he knows everything, then it doesn't make sense to say God can be ignorant of anything because all wise, all knowledgeable means he's 100% knowledgeable and 0% ignorant. So God cannot become 5% ignorant. He cannot become 5% ignorant while he's 100% knowledgeable. So God cannot become a human being and become ignorant. It's all wise. It goes against his divine qualities, his attributes, his, his qualities. So the idea that God can become a man and die, it goes against his nature. God's nature is all knowledgeable. He cannot become not all knowledgeable, less than all knowledgeable. No, God, Jesus wasn't all knowledgeable. Jesus says in the New Testament, of that day and of that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, not the Son, but only the Father. But this passage says, no one knows, not even the Son, only the Father. If it means only the Father, even the Holy Spirit doesn't know, the Son doesn't know. That means Jesus, in whatever capacity, he doesn't know. Only the Father knows. So Jesus, by his own admissions, he was not all knowledgeable. If he was not, if you're not all knowledgeable, then you're not God. No, no. God, you cannot say he can come in a form that is not all knowledgeable because he is all knowledgeable. You cannot become, you cannot make God who is all knowledgeable and make him ignorant because God's nature is all knowledgeable. He cannot change his nature and from all knowledgeable to ignorant, from infinite to finite, from loving to not loving. Can God, all loving God become less than all loving? Do you believe God is love and God is loving? Can he become now 50% loving and 50% hateful? Exactly not. Because that's what you believe tells you. God cannot go against his nature. So if God is all knowledgeable, he cannot become anything which is ignorant, like Jesus Christ, who is not all knowledgeable. Did he know the hour? The Father can be God because yeah. he knows the hour. Can, does the Son know? Uh, the Son seems that you can, uh, uh, there is a website that talks about the end times, yeah? No, before we go into the end times, as you've told my friend, I can reach out to him. Does Jesus know when the world's going to come to an end, according to Jesus? For the people who are interested, the website is downwardpress.com uh, and it talks sure, about Sure, people can go into this website, no problem. But Jesus, according to his own admission, he doesn't know the hour. Anyone who doesn't know something now, they couldn't have known it yesterday or the day before because they couldn't have been all knowledgeable. Because we established one thing. All knowledgeable being will always remain all knowledgeable. Will be never ignorant of anything. That is what the Quran is saying. Quran tells us God is all knowledgeable all the time. He doesn't 
become less than all knowledgeable. So you compare the Quran and the Bible and ask yourself in your heart and your mind, which one is giving me a correct description of God that my heart and my mind agree with. Your heart will not agree with the Bible that the three, four examples I've given you, but your heart and your mind will agree with the Quran. The Quran tells you what your heart and your mind agrees. It will be in resonance, in consonance with this understanding of God. We're not talking about how we are saved. We're talking about who God is. No, no. Is it important to know who God is? If you want to love someone, okay. Do you love Tunka Wonka? Do you love Tunka Wonka? I did ask you, who is that? Do you love Tunka Wonka? Do you see the problem? You cannot love someone if you don't know someone. You don't know what Tunka Wonka is. Tunka Wonka could be a potato, right? Or it could be my, 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 my children's toys. Because you don't know, you cannot love someone unless you know them. To love God, you have to know God. So it's important to know God, first of all, who God is. So what I'm demonstrating to you, that God, we need to know who He is. We know that God is unknowledgeable, but not according to the Bible. We know that God doesn't become ignorant according to the Quran, but according to the Bible, He can become ignorant. Does God forget? In the Bible, God needs reminding by a rainbow. So he, he forgets. That doesn't show that this is God.